Yes, I have an electric car. Yes, it is tiny and it's really, really noisy around here. There's a tractor over there. There's a main road over here. There's a charge point going behind me and I'm driving a really, really quiet car because it's the Volkswagen E up exclamation mark because the E signifies that the car has a battery pack underneath. And it's the best electric car you should buy right now with a number of flaws. And we're going to go into that right after this. So dimensionally speaking, this is the same size as a Volkswagen up that's powered by a three cylinder engine, you know, a little one liter one, which I think is one of the better cars on the market. That, the Saint Me and the Skoda City Go should have been left on the market the whole time. They are literally environment savers because they're so small and so kind to the environment and their manufacturer, it's easy. I'm sure I'm gonna get a ton of hate in the comments for that. But you can see when the back door is open, that bit is the boot. That bit is the back seat. There's the charger, half broken. Handle's a bit dodgy here, it's been smashed a while. And this charger only puts out 38 kilowatts or 35 kilowatts, somewhere around there. But the benefit of me using this charger is the maximum speed this charge is at is about 35 kilowatts. So that's, it matches one to the other. Now that's a bad thing. And I'm going to go into one other problem with the charge point and the way that this car charges right now. So one of the massive oversights that Volkswagen made on this car was to put in just a 7.2 kilowatt hour onboard AC charger. The competition, let's say a Renault Zoe, put in a 22 kilowatt charger, which means you could literally charge on your lunch break at one of those slower chargers where there's no overstay fee, where the rate can sometimes be cheaper at the slower chargers instead of these fast chargers. So if you go to a 50 kilowatt, thinking about the DC charging of this, at 38 kilowatt hour, I think is the fastest this thing can charge. So if you go to a 50 kilowatt, you're only getting half the speed for half the time because the charging curve takes over and the curve takes over in under 10 minutes in this car, or at least that's the way I see it when I'm charging it up myself. So the problem exists then of the, the onboard charging bits should have been made faster. What would have been good was a 50 kilowatt onboard charger on this and a 22 kilowatt onboard AC charger would be much better because I just think going to these fast chargers is kind of a waste of these small little batteries. I've also had one or two people suggest that the boot of this car is small, that you wouldn't fit a laptop bag in it. Well, I found that to be a lie. Now you look at that, that is my weekend bag because I am literally going off to um, Frankfurt with a car company today and that bag is just full of gear in there. No problem, you're gonna get two suitcases in there, easily. I've also heard some people say that the back seat is small. Well, I found that to be also a lie. As you can see, I fit in here quite easily. Look at that, look at the space between me and the passenger seat, no problem. If you're very tall in the front seat, you might encroach a little bit into the back seat. It's probably not the most comfortable thing, but this is a city runabout. You shouldn't be thinking of this car as the number one big long distance family car. One other thing I want to point out to you is these windows are push out, they don't roll down, so you push them from the inside and they pop out. Probably not the best way of getting ventilation in the back seats, but generally speaking, this car is going to be the granny mobile, or it's going to be the young first time driver's mobile, or some child seat in the back here is going to be the main feature of it, and you won't need windows anyway, because you've got air conditioning. Actually, I'll run a topic of air conditioning. Some people say that this car isn't, isn't well equipped. I found some of that to be a lie. Let's find out why. So this here is the front seat set up for me. This has a rake only on a steering wheel, which is a bit of a problem. But on the seat itself, it does have an up and down feature. So you can get higher or lower and you've got a nice big instrument binnacle. And some of the details that are missing, there isn't any Apple CarPlay or anything else. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Volkswagen app right now. So this is the actual dashboard. You can see the air conditioning is here. The temperature is there, one side single zone and the speed is on this side. There is an auto function here as well. There's also heated seats, both sides of the front. Then you have a Bluetooth compatible stereo down here as well. The stereo itself is actually pretty good, but just your infotainment system is provided by your phone sitting here, connected by Bluetooth to this, or connected by cable to this, which is actually conveniently placed behind as a charging cable. It does have a Volkswagen app attached, but realistically, the app isn't exactly brilliant. I'm sure it'll get an update in the future. Also on the front here, you can see that I'm charging currently, which has actually got this little flashing light here, and I can do 151 kilometers and just coming up to 
all the glove are half full here. I've been here for about 10 or 15 minutes. And this is the thing that tells you how much power you're putting on. Things don't work, I haven't started the car properly, but a range is 151 kilometers at the moment. And I've done a total of 344 kilometers in it. This surface, this is really nice, really pretty in here. Like there's plenty of space and things. Automatic gearbox, you've got an eco button down here. A floor is manky for it. we were running yesterday. Uh, eco and eco plus, and then it tells you about plugging in here. And there's a cup holder in front, which is just hosting my keys. And then a useless shelf right here. And then in the door pocket, showing you tons of room in here, loads of stuff. You can get a huge big bottle of Volvic types bottled water in here. Uh, and there's plenty of room in there for the passenger as well. And speaking of glove boxes, there's plenty of room in that glove box. So the car is going to finish charging over the next while, and then we're going to go for a spin. But let's just talk about a couple of things. First of all, the app is quite a letdown. The app really should tell me what kind of charger I'm looking at on the app and how far away it is, which does the how far away bit. And it tells you that it's e-cars, e or it tells you that it's something else. But it doesn't tell you the speed of the charger. It doesn't tell you whether it's occupied or free. It just there is a charger, go to it. Uh, secondly, the music player doesn't work in the app at all. I can't make it work Spotify. It, it runs a radio for sure, but if I click that I want Spotify, it exits the app and goes into Spotify. But then it makes it lands, uh, sorry, portrait on, on a landscape phone. So, so when you put it on the dashboard, you can't see and it's kind of weird. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense, Volkswagen. You really need to address that. Uh, because I'd sooner not have a holder up here. I mean, I mean, if I go back to someone like Dacia, who's created a Dacia app that works and integrates very well on a phone, and when you put it on the dashboard and plug it in, it all seems to work fine. It takes over. But Volkswagen's one seems to work a little bit, like the Think Blue Trainer and all is all working okay on it, and the range and things, that's all working okay, but the infotainment system's not, and the map isn't. Um... The other thing we have to discuss here is the price. The, this car is, well, it's, it's about 25 grand, 26 grand, somewhere in that region. That's a lot of money for a small car. This car should be 17, 18, 19 grand plus options. That's what it should be uh, because that's where small cars were. 25 grand used to be a proper family five-door hatchback. And we're talking about a Volkswagen Golf here, 28 to 29 grand. Was a, was a golf size car and it was okay equipped at that point as well. This is okay equipped, I get it, but you're paying an awful lot for that battery underneath there and you are going to be inconvenienced by the range of this car, you are. You're just gonna to have to deal with that because this is the proper car to buy. This does not waste batteries, this puts them all to use all the time and if you charge at home a lot, you're gonna be fine with this. But we're gonna get on the road now and really find out, drill down a little bit further what it's like to drive because I think it's one of the more exciting electric cars to drive of all of them. This is also a problem. Just it's all dangling, like, <laughs> you know, that and that. <clears throat> so one neat little feature is it's actually got a key and a keyhole. <laughs> you actually turn the key and that's it, it's on. See, just get a bing bong and away you go. Okay, so driving wise, it's actually quite nippy. This car feels a lot more powerful. It's like, feels like a little up GTI, you know what I mean? This is, Whee! it's so much fun to drive a small car like this. I've always liked small cars. I've always liked the up, Skoda City Go, Say It Me, Kia Picanto. There's just loads of little, little cars that are really good value that you can buy now second hand for small money. I think at this stage, although no car is really that cheap anymore, but this, this isn't the cheapest of battery-powered vehicles, but it is a Volkswagen. And we like Volkswagen. Volkswagen currently have the best-selling battery-powered vehicle on the market, which is the ID4. Uh, now there's an ID3, which is actually pretty good. Software probably still a little bit of a hazy issue on it. But ID4 is a big car, big batteries, big everything. Whereas this, it's a small car, small batteries, small everything. Everything's tiny, everything's pint sized in it. Air conditioning works very well when you're driving along in it. It's actually quite comfortable. It feels a little bit less heavier, you know, sodden on the road than a lot of other 
uh, battery powered cars are. Now, I think we're starting to move into a lot of stuff here closed up. I think we're starting to move into an era where we want and should be driving smaller cars. I find a lot of people are going against the SUV model. They don't want it anymore. They're just not interested because there's too many of them, because it's too common. You pull into a car park right now, I challenge you, Duns, Tesco, Lidl, Aldi, Super Value, any of the most guys, anything you want, and you will be surrounded by essentially the same car over and over again. It holds the one and two and three positions in the country of stupid little SUVs. Most of them drive terrible. A lot of people say, but I like the high seating position. They're not that high. I like the size of them. They're not that big. Look at an estate. Look at this hatchback. Look at hatchbacks in general. They're coming up on the same size as the SUVs. And some of the hatchbacks out there are bigger than SUV size because SUVs compromise the size of the cabin for the height of the car to get in taller suspension, uh, different systems underneath doesn't make any sense this compromises nothing this literally had a three-cylinder engine whipped out of the front and some batteries put in underneath and closed up on the bottom what they've done is they put in um, an automatic obviously it's an automatic it's electric cars it's really no gearbox but well, there is but it's not really it's it's just kind of one gear that spins forward and backwards that's sort of it uh, but what they've done is with the gearbox is they're giving you resistance levels. So you can click across to get recuperation up to level three and then back into B mode is level four, two, one, and then of course recuperation level one essentially is off. So the car feels like it's freewheeling. It's only barely getting any charge at all. Uh, level one then is when it comes on, you can actually charge as soon as you decelerate, just enter the motorway here. Um, but I'm going to turn it off now and I'm going to go eco mode, comfort and performance restricted that's what happens so you can go i think 100 kilometers an hour is the max eco plus is 90 or 80 or something a little bit a little bit slower but essentially eco leaves your air conditioning on but tries to keep the car speed down because speed is the enemy of distance the faster you want to go the less distance you're going to cover and that is the same essentially for all cars not just this car that's it. all cars are like that so i'm going to set my little cruise control i'm going to try and save as much electricity as i can because this car is going back today and another journalist that wants it and had to be charged up again and it charged very slow and on that subject i know we kind of covered it but volkswagen you really are missing a trick by not putting a 22 kilowatt ac charger into this where i can charge on the street at a 22 kilowatt charger at 22 kilowatts i did it before in a renault mcgann a renault zoe i'm telling you don't let anyone convince you different that it, that it, oh should it means not nobody uses a 22 they do smart people use a 22 kilowatt charger I'm not talking about smart people who turn up in a Nissan Leaf, plug in and don't charge, which I've, I've met a man in Port Leash who does that every day in his little Nissan Leaf. He just plugs the car in at the charge point to get free parking. It's a real scummy move. He blocks up train stations. Anything that's a slow charge is blocked up by him. I can easily unplug and plug in his cable every time, so it's not charging anything. Um, those kind of behaviors are terrible but not against the law. The problem is people's behavior is gonna get worse as we start to get more and more charge, uh, more and more battery powered cars on the road because the more of them there are, the more fight there's gonna be for those charge points when you go anywhere, particularly in the short range models where you probably will have to charge and at some point at a public charge point and that's where your difficulties just reach in. Now, I can compromise on all those difficulties, no problem because this is a lovely car to drive it's lovely to sit in even on a long journey i miss an old armrest in the middle but you know it's lovely on a long journey it's lovely on a short journey kids to school shopping all those things are done on a single charge once every few days that's all you're going to do really once every few days you're going to charge this you'd be surprised how far these cars can go on a single charge when you get used to it so when you're sitting at home at night time uh, and the car is plugged in outside and you get a full charge in a couple of hours because it's a small battery, <laughs> uh, or you want to charge on the street, you're only going to charge 7.2 kilowatts, but that's the problem of Volkswagen. Volkswagen, just put a 22 kilowatt hour charge on this and people will stop annoying you, I think. I think anyone sensible out there now would look for the 22 kilowatt charger. Look, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've hit the subscribe button. Some massive changes might be coming to the channel very soon. Uh, 
I'm going to do my best to keep you informed, uh, but I'm going to find out more in the next few days. But anyway, look at hit the subscribe button. It's going to be a fun ride over the next few months. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, I'll see you on the far side.